11 sticks to rule them all, and we're on the way to Sleepy Hollow. Freaking out, I'm so excited. Look, this place looks so nice. I wish I wasn't late for my tea time so I could hit some balls. Suppose we're gonna tee off at 2.30, that's so early. I'm a little surprised, Tom, that you've never played here. I mean, you've played, you played all over the world. That's the thing, like, my, um, my golf cannon in the United States is not that strong, I mean. Growing up in Philly, a lot of great courses. Um, so you didn't like want for great golf at all. Um, and then I started getting into length stuff, and so Ireland, Scotland, and but I mean, yeah, that's why I'm kind of kicking around doing like an American. Ooh, story, right? well, hot see. news. See, yeah. I mean, would you go with the same nomenclature or? <laughs> right. right, we've got a little thing going. Yeah. I don't know. Course called home. We'll see. Um, Kicking around a few ideas. This is a pretty sick backdrop here. Yeah, it's amazing. Right here, got the whole. See the bridges. It's amazing. It definitely tells the history on the hole. Then the signature Sleepy Hollow flagpole, and then the number three. It just gives you everything in a panel right here in a nutshell. Yeah, you don't see that from down there either. No, it's kind of cool. It's a it. surprise. It's, it's all, that's all that admiration of walking and feeling it out. Yeah. The How many times you, you walk this place? I don't have enough hands <laughs> or legs. <laughs> That's a feeling for you. Talk to me about your game right now. What's going on? I ha haven't played in two weeks, but uh, stuffed it on both of the first two. And you know, I think the the rationale or the the sort of saying would be. You know, I haven't, swing feels rusty, but I also haven't seen a bad shot in two weeks, so my mind is at ease right now. What, uh, what's your handicap? Uh, I'm a scratch. Come on. Tells me over on the second green, he's scratch. Hitting him stiff. <laughs> Hitting him stiff. <laughs> there's good and there's bad. I'm not, I'm not like a regular. Glad to have you, bud. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Instagram. Just literally was like, let's play golf. I was like, how about Thursday? So, Tom, this is, you guys literally met because he was like, yeah, there's this really cool guy that went around and then that was you. Yeah, I was there, right? I was like, yeah. Was it Stonewall? Yeah. Yeah. Small world, this golfing world. Playing in a foursome, and I was talking about an article, and I think Golf Digest is featuring this article about a guy who's walking around a circumference of Ireland playing golf, course to course. And the person says to me, well, you're an idiot. Do you know who that is? And I said, who's that? And they said, Tom Coyne. I was like, wait, that's the guy who wrote the book? I said, yeah. So over the next 16 holes, because we were on like third hole, I casually walked over and introduced myself. Now I've traveled to Ireland with the man and here and we played at each other's home courses a couple of times. He calls me and complains about his game. I complain about my height. It was funny, I was in the pro shop buying a shirt and the woman and someone was asking about how long did it take you to play all the courses in Scotland and the woman turns to me and she says, are you the guy that walked around to Ireland? I'm like, no way, get out of here. <laughs> And there I am. Well, my husband's a huge fan, so it's funny, man. It's these books go off and have a life of their own, and like, it's, it's crazy. A lot of golf books are kind of slow. They feel like, you know, they're written for a generation beyond ours. And what makes you say that to someone like, like, because maybe someone watching this hasn't read it? I just thought that you know the descriptions were interesting. The challenge is obviously exciting, and it, it you know, there's a suspenseful feeling in the first uh, whatever hour and a half that I've been through so far. You got a new fan. He just on. feels bad because he's made three threes in a row. <laughs> three, three, three. three. <laughs> Shoot it at, babe. 215. 215? Oh, yeah. Play 25 downhill. Hole in one watch here. Jake, what's going on? 
That ball is high. See that? See it is far. Said, We're in New York, right? It's high. It's far. Yeah. But it's not gone. It's on the green. Oh, it's, it's, it's actually it's rolling towards the flag. It's hooking towards the flag. It's doing what it should. Yeah. It's a little shallow. Wow. You know, you can't see that slope from up here, but no. if I was a golf design enthusiast, I would tell you about all the ways that that was a beautiful shot and it was supposed to. CB McD. Ar the architect 100 years ago designed it to happen that way. Except they were probably hitting a spoon back then. Are you making fun of the fried egg? <laughs> Such a casual start. Uh, go. Go. Fly, 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 go. Fly, fly, fly. go. Third. Third. That has to go, huh? Got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Needed one more on that one. What'd you hit? I hit a six. <laughs> this is a 215 par three reverse redan. Is it really? Yep. Yeah. Eric's on the tee. Oh, it's a little heavy and it is slicing a little to the right. I haven't hit a really good golf shot once today. But yeah, that's you know, uh, he's right, he the, 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 on the positive. He has left himself a we full. Can still make, we can he's still left make himself a full pitch shot. <laughs> up to I'm the pin. so bad it's good. <laughs> Gee, how do you feel about my uh, club selection? On I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, the club selection. I mean, it wasn't bad, but you know, I think a little more involvement with the caddy there on that one probably would have had you at about 200. But hey, we all make mistakes. No, no, you know what? You did, you did. I think. <laughs> Once again, Eric looks for his ball far away from the green. Oh, I got it. I haven't really hit a good shot today, so I'm looking forward to that moment. I've hit a couple off the tee, but no approaches. Did you start playing golf for all this? Or did uh, you play golf and then decide to do all this? No, I started playing golf, fell in love with it after hating it before ever trying it. What for you makes a good golf experience? Uh, you know, just kind of a, a laid back atmosphere, you know? People, people having a good time, beautiful surroundings. Conducive caddy. Yeah, great. <laughs> Say again. 100% of a conducive caddy. I always look at like, movies, you know, I'm like, what makes a good movie? Is it the director or is it the writer or is it the actor? And sure, you can say it's some combination of the above, but overall, I kind of believe that the actor can take a bad script and work with a bad director and still make a piece of art. But I feel like a bad director is going to fuck up a good actor and a bad, and a good writer, it, it could be a great script, but it could be produced like crap. So it's like the same way with golf, like, it's not the course. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of great film directors can come from theater because they're used to working with actors, but very rarely could you go the other way if you were a film director. Oh, interesting. I mean, not that I'm an expert. That's just, you know, a hack opinion that I have. He's not a hack, folks. <laughs> We've been called off the shot. It's okay, we got something. We got a little emergency here we need to look at. Uh, the famous author Tom Coyne is in a bit of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> 65 play would be the scenario. He's going to hit it, I think. Six iron. Six iron. Yeah. Did you just get a Texas accent? Because it's not like you said six iron. Six iron. G, what are your feelings right now? I feel great. Thank you. <laughs> G, this is all your idea, remember? 100%. <laughs> Bub toss. All right, partner. Yeah, come on. All right. No, it's really talking about it. Brook? Come on, son. It's a brook. It's a brook. Oh, oh, come on, come right on, run it, 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 run I'm gonna hit the shit out of it. Oh, this could oh. be the one that changes. Nice yeah. soft eight is in the air, slightly left of the hole, coming down. Over the spine. Slightly Kick right. Oh, oh, that was a sick shot. Take it. Yeah, we're all tight. 12 feet. 12 feet oh, wow. so. Well done. Good number. Thanks, G.
So we're on 15, and we're talking about 16, which is a strange thing to do, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> we just can't we've wait. Been, we have been looking forward Come to 16 on, all day. Get to it already. Six, 16 is the signature hole, but Tom, what do you know about 16? Well, I mean, Hans restored it to what it was, right? To the way McDonald, you know, built it from his... Uh, Memories of golf in Scotland and the templates, etc. Though I've never seen a hole in Scotland anything <laughs> anything like it, but um, I, it looks kind of cool. I'm excited. It's on all the pictures. I don't know. What What are your thoughts on the hole, as far as your understanding of Scottish golf and Irish golf? Um, I, Without ever having played it. Yeah, you know, because <laughs> we're on 15. We're not on 16 yet. <laughs> we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to withhold judgment, but the caddies right now are, uh, they're, they're not too excited about it, which I'm surprised about. So, um, do you think maybe the caddies are just trying to under promise and over deliver? I think that's what it is. You know, I think they want us going in there just, you know, when you've, when you've seen the Mona Lisa 500 times, right? it's just a painting. It's just Mona. Exactly. <laughs> Smoked. That was good. If you know me, you know I love a good tea box, and Sleepy does not sleep on the tea boxes. I just thought of that right there. I wasn't planning that. That wasn't a bit. That was just, I was just talking. I guess, Tom, I would like to ask you a question that I feel like you could answer really well after reading, you know, your work. Why do you play golf? You know, it's, it feels like it's part of who I am, I think. Identity. <laughs> I, it's it's sort of in my blood. It's something I've been doing since I was a kid. I don't think I'd know who I was without this chase, this obsession, this thing that that I keep uh, this ball I keep following around. I don't know if I know who I was. It's kind of screwed up, isn't it? This course is starting to do something to me. You know, the first couple holes are pretty subtle. You're not like there's no like crazy crazy magic, but now. Maybe it's because we're about to approach 16, but I'm not really even a signature hole guy, so I can kind of agree with what David's saying about like, oh, you know, he doesn't like 16. It's sort of contrived or whatever. Or it's too famous. I don't like any of that shit either. Like, I would much rather have a tiny street in an unknown neighborhood than a big famous street. So now here we are. But you start to get, you understand why McDonald put it all here. Right? You, you start to get it, and it starts to really feel the way I think really great golf courses feel, which is a little tiny bit spiritual. I mean, if you see that, I just feel like it goes forever. Mm -hmm.